and you just dip it in, and then you just like stuff yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were incredible. They were so good. Okay, I'm driving, it's a road, whoa. Yeah. It's like so beautiful and very airy. It is. It's really fresh, so it tastes I mean, really I'm really hungry. Nice. Stomachs are growling, huh? Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area diners review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Here's how it works. We have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, a round of sparkling apple cider for all as kids join us at the Check Please table. Jacob is a budding critic with his own website. He's dished on dozens of San Francisco restaurants. Today, he'll share his opinions on his fellow guest restaurants as his pick is currently closed. And tennis champ Holden tucks into traditional and hearty Georgian fare in Palo Alto. But first, an avid reader, Anoki found a one-of-a-kind place to kick back and dine al fresco. Stunning bay views, the bounty of the sea, and bocce ball. Located in the middle of the bay on Treasure Island, it's Merseille. Merseille is on Treasure Island. And I would say 90% of our guests have never been on Treasure Island before. People think it's a world away, but it's only five minutes from downtown. Thanks, buddy. It's a great place to get away. And the vibe is totally different out here. You're, you're on island time, as I call it, when you get here. We're right in the line of the ocean, so there are days that it is windy, it is cold, it is warm, it is all the seasons in one day. But that's what makes it fun. What I think is also unique here is where else can you go and you see Alcatraz and Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge to San Francisco, the new Bay Bridge to Oakland, and you can actually bike here on the Bay Bridge from Oakland and Berkeley to Treasure Island and enjoy the island itself. And there's a lot of history. It was the place for the World's Fair in the 1930s. And then subsequently during World War II, it became a naval base. And for many, many years after the war, it was abandoned. And then it took some vision of some developers and working with the city, they decided to develop it. We want to stay true to the environment, recycling and repurposing. So we repurpose palace, we repurpose the tables from the old bowling alley lanes, from the Treasure Island bowling alley. Merseille is 13 shipping containers. I would say Marseille has a unique, one-of-a-kind kitchen. It is a military rapid deployment kitchen, an MRDK, and it's three 20-foot containers that can rapidly be deployed anywhere by the military, be put together, plugged in, and ready to cook. The majority of my background in cooking and my restaurant experience has been fine dining, white tablecloth. When we had this opportunity to move out here, uh, I knew it wasn't gonna be that. And that excited me, really. I really wanted to create something where you could gather around the table. That comfort casual food, I think, calms you down, evokes some memories of, of growing up or of happy times. So most people, they don't wanna leave here. The kids especially don't wanna leave because there's so much to do here, there's so much to look at. 
dying to get something to oh, eat. Oh, so. bless you for stopping by. We have loyal customers and to see people happy, whether it's the food, the experience, and I have made new friends from this little restaurant. And for me, that, that's where my joy is every day. Hi. 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 See ya. How did you find this? It is tucked away. When we say tucked away, it is tucked away. So my dad likes to find restaurants and he likes to look around for new places that we can eat. And it was Father's Day and he was kind of, you know, scouting around and he found this little restaurant. Right. So you went there and right when you walk around it, it's just beautiful because you can see the city in the background. Mm -hmm. It just has this whole vacation feeling and they have constantly playing Hawaiian music to make you feel like you're on an island vacation. I love being there. Driving uh, down to the restaurant, it's just uh, really amazing. You gotta drive past all the abandoned military housing. Mm -hmm. And then once you're there, you just see like stunning views of the bay. Stunning. It's surprising. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It, it was is, like, isn't it? okay, I'm driving, it's a road, whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like so beautiful and colorful. It's very airy, kind of the atmosphere. It is, When yeah. you look at the yeah. restaurant, most of it's outside. You've got, you know, Bocce ball and you can play putt-putt golf, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Park Ulrich is one of the co-owners and yeah. chef. He's also a chef at Water Bar and Epic uh, Steakhouse. Just right across the, the water, you can see the other places he has. And so he certainly brings a deft touch to a lot of those dishes, even though they're super cash, huh? Yeah. What did you start with, Holden? So for an appetizer, we had the parched chowder, which is very frothy and light, and it felt really, really creamy and delicious, except it didn't have that much cream in it, actually. And so uh, it was a great appetizer to start with. It was warm and comforting, tons of fresh vegetables. Park is a chowder snob. He hates it when I say it, but he's a chowder snob. He loves chowder. Not only did he grow up in the East Coast, but helming Water Bar, formerly Farallon, these you know, high-end, ultra-quality seafood restaurant. He knows his seafood. Chowders, yeah, I, I judge a restaurant. Fortunately or unfortunately, I judge a restaurant by their soup. <laughs> we don't do clam chowder here, we just do, we do our fish chowder. It's definitely a lighter style chowder. I just use the starch and the potatoes to thicken it. The potatoes soak in the cream overnight, that's one secret. Park's chowder, Bar none, probably one of the best chowders in the West Coast. And I'll bank on that. <laughs> I agree, it was really good. It was surprising too, because usually when you have a big chowder, you're expecting it to be a thick, kind of hearty thing. But I mean, this was hearty, but it was less than you would expect from most chowder, which is great because it leaves room for all the other wonderful food that they have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What, what do you like to get, Anoki? Yeah, so our um, appetizer there was the ceviche which I really enjoyed because it's not, there's not a ton of ingredients in there that overpower the fish. Okay. You have some tortilla chips on the side for some crunch, and you know, the fish kind of does all the talking. It's really fresh, so it, it tastes really really hungry. <laughs> 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 all right, stomachs are growling, huh? Uh, what else do you guys get when you go? What do you, what do you get normally? Our favorite has been the chicken tacos. I think it's shredded chicken, so it's um, very thin, and the um, cabbage, and the tomatoes in there, and there's like a smooth guacamole kind of sauce, and then the salsa in there, they just all, they work together so nicely. The tortillas are actually made there, and they're fried. So you get that nice crunch mm -hmm. to those tacos, but yes. you can get fish. Too. Yeah. Have you ever gotten the fish? Yeah, we got the fish tacos. We enjoyed those as well. The fish there is really fresh. Right. Holden's over here shaking his head yeah. going, yeah, <laughs> do you have the tacos? Yeah. The, yeah, the it was so crunchy, and then the sauce is just light and pulls the dish all together. I have the fish tacos as well, <laughs> so that makes three of us. I mean, I at first, they felt very overpowering because it was like, okay, I'm eating, to, oh, wow, there's a lot of fish. But I liked it a lot. It definitely features the fish. I think they were really delicious. What else did you have besides the tacos? Uh, I did do one of those make your own salads. Mm -hmm. It was really good because I kind of picked out elements that would like kind of like contrast and mm -hmm. complement each other. So it had like cranberries in it and it had like candied nuts, or, like pralines sort of. And then, yeah, it, w it was really good. And I, I would imagine like there's an option to put chicken I saw on the menu and I right. could see that being a very like full meal. Well, and you can get breakfast items too at yeah. this place, right? So I got the Jersey Girl sandwich as well. So it has like a crumpet like bun and then inside there's like a pork roll. It would just kind of taste a bit like spam, but then also- You know what spam is? Yeah. I love it. It's spam. <laughs> it's like sausage spam. And then uh, kimchi on the outside, so it adds that healthy note right. and fermented dough. So, and uh, it's got an egg, right? Yeah, so it got, got an egg, fried and egg too. And yeah. yeah, so mm. together it goes really well. There's a lot of flavors, so I usually like take two or three bites and then I have to like take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a big sandwich. Yeah, yeah, it it's is. It's a really definitely. big one. Any other thing that you get? Oh yeah, the fish and chips. 
the batter is really crunchy and it's nice because the fish is so soft and there's not that much fish, like it's not like a heavy amount of fish. Mm -hmm. So the batter complements the lightness of the fish and the mm -hmm. chips are very nice. Okay, let's talk about dessert. Sure. She's going, yes, please, <laughs> yes, please. What's the star item in your eyes? The giant chocolate chip oh, cookie yeah, yeah. was <laughs> so good. So they actually, they tell you, they say we bake it fresh so it might take a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but once it comes it's piping hot and the chocolate chips are gooey and the cookie is nice and moist and it just crumbles so nicely and it's like huge. Yeah, so I, I got it too and so my dad was in the restroom and so like, should we save some? Yeah, and then oh. we came back. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Dad, you can pay, but we ate all the yeah. cookie. <laughs> I didn't have dessert, but I did have the fresh lemonade, and I really like that it's, I mean, there's some lemonade that's just too sweet. Right. And there's some lemonade that's just very fancy and like very sour. And this kind of is that umami sort of between the two. It's like right. very refreshing, and it kind of matches the whole airy atmosphere. Well, and people hang out there. Like, there is a, a very nice cocktail list for adults and mm -hmm. a well-selected small wine list. And you can sit out there and really enjoy it. You, can yeah. bring, you know, it's pet friendly. Yeah. You've got activities to do. Did yeah, you guys yeah. just hang out? I liked that, like, there was a whole succulent garden. And I saw a sign up that was like, don't take the plants. But if you'd like one, you could talk to our owner, and they'll oh, rent you to take one. Great. And I read that was like, oh, wow, that's, that's really special. Yeah? Do you feel like when you go? Do you hang out and just spend time there? Yeah, definitely. We play bocce ball and it's a pretty view, so we go outside actually in the front. Mm -hmm. There's a little um, sculpture that my sister likes to climb all over, and then there's mm -hmm. a lawn, and then right in front of it there's the rocks, where if you just sit there and look at the bay, it's really, it's yeah. calming yeah. and it's peaceful. Yeah, it was nice. You How often do you go fish, there? Yeah. Um, we don't go there a ton, but I've been there quite a few times okay. just because we enjoy it so much. All right, this is your spot, Anoki. Wrap it up for us. Environmentally conscious and aesthetically pleasing, Merseille serves up fresh Californian cuisine and a beautiful view of the city. All right, and Jacob? Uh, Merseille has a really nice open airy environment and delicious food to match. And hold it. If you want powerful flavors and a beautiful view of the sparkling bay, come to Merseille, a treasure on Treasure Island. If you would like to try Merseille, it's on Avenue of the Palms on Treasure Island. It's open for lunch and early dinner, Tuesday through Sunday, and the average tab per person is around $25. One of Holden's favorite comfort foods is Xiaolong Bao, Chinese soup dumplings. But lately he's been craving Kinkali, a distant dumpling cousin. They're just one of the many traditional staples offered at Holden's Pick, the Bay Area's first Georgian restaurant. In downtown Palo Alto, it's Beverly. We consider ourselves as ambassadors of Georgian culture here in the Bay Area. We bring Georgian experience primarily through bringing food and drinks, wine. My name is Pavel. Uh, I'm Russian. Uh, I come from Russia. And Russian people generally uh, adore uh, Georgian cuisine. There's been a long, long history of uh, two cultures exchanging culinary experiences. And when we came here to California, we saw that there, there were no Georgian restaurants. So that's, that's how we decided, uh, why not bring this wonderful culinary experience here and uh, to introduce this. Georgia is a country located on the border uh, of Europe and Asia. And so Georgians, they took the best parts of all sorts of cuisines, uh, European and Asian, spices, flavors, different dishes. So my grandmother teached me that the main thing is like, on which mood are you on? Like, if you are thinking about some bad and if you got anger in your heart, the, they, they will never go. In, in the heart of the restaurant, uh, there is always a chef. And uh, our chef comes from Georgia, uh, more specifically from uh, Ajari region. He spent a lot of time uh, cooking in Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. And uh, he experimented with dishes from all Georgian regions. And uh, in, in Georgia, uh, every region has very distinct dishes. The name of the restaurant, it means a lot. Normally, the way you enjoy a Georgian meal is you invite a lot of friends and family and uh, you put a lot of food on your table. A lot of dishes are shared because you, you want to try everything you have on the table, obviously. Georgia is the birthplace of wine. UNESCO found evidence that Georgians started producing wine 8,000 years ago uh, and they mastered it uh, very, very well. Uh, historically, they, uh, they were fermenting the wine in large clay jars, uh, which they bury uh, underground. And uh, this technique adds a lot of interesting notes to the wine and texture, the color. 
For kids, we have a really nice selection of drinks as well. So there are two types of Georgian soda. One is called Tarragon soda, and the second one is Spe soda called Juches. Running a Georgian restaurant in this area is, is a lot of fun. We also want to show uh, the beauty of some other aspects of Georgian culture, like uh, the costumes and, and hospitality. Georgians are very fa famous for, for their hospitality, and uh, that's what we are trying to bring up here. So, how did you discover this place, and why do you love the food so much? Well, so me and my friends are big foodies, and so uh, one of my friend's families discovered this uh, beverage in downtown Palo Alto, and so they're, they're just raving about it at school the next day about this really big bread boat with like all this <laughs> cheese and egg and butter, and I was like, I should definitely try that. So then we went, and it was just like amazing. Let's Jeez. talk about the kachapuri because that's a signature, yes. right? Okay. okay, so it's a big, big pizza-like uh, bread shape, and so it has... Maybe a, not that big. Yeah, not, no, that, not big. that big. This big. <laughs> and it has a little crust, and the, so inside the crust there's cheese, so you have oil and butter, and then they have a raw egg, so you mix it all up in the middle, and then you cut a slice, and you just dip it in, and then you just like stuff yourself. <laughs> Ajarian kachapuri, and it's the, in the shape of the boat. So that's because uh, the, a lot of sailors uh, were there in the Batumi, right? And the egg yolk in the middle of the boat symbolized the sun in the sky. So that's for the good weather and the good wind from your back, right, in the sea. So that's how the tradition is still kept till today. So it's a very, very old one and very meaningful for our country. Did you like it? Did you stuff yourself? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. We went with a lot of family because it was uh, me and my mom and then uh, our three cousins. And it was, it was really great because it was really good for sharing. And I mean, I eat a lot, but I couldn't eat that much. Right. So sliced it up, shared it. <laughs> and it was really great because kind of each piece is sort of its own kind of unique flavor. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. When you walked in Anoki, what did you think? I've never you know, been exposed to Georgian culture or even heard of Georgian food. So it was cool going here and tasting flavors that I'd never had before. What did you start with? Um, so we started with this dish. Um, it was a bunch of pickled ingredients. So there was pickled onions and there were these little cloves of pickled garlic and they were just straight garlic. So you'd expect them to be very garlicky, but they were actually a little bit of a kind of softer garlic. And then there was this flour called jonjoli that I'd never heard of before, but it was pickled and it was crunchy. Mm -hmm. and the pickled ingredients went nicely when we ordered the kachapuri. It kind of cut the fat very nicely. Did you have anything else? Well, for appetizer, mm -hmm. I usually get this dish called pakali, which is Georgian spreads, beet and spinach, mm -hmm. with eggplant rolls in the middle. And it usually comes with a side of shoti, which mm -hmm. is a traditional Georgian bread that's baked underground. Mm. The bread is really light and crunchy. Mm -hmm. And so you spread the spreads onto the bread and they go really nice together. Yeah, mm -hmm. the spread, and it was really good. It had like cilantro, it was very oily. You can kind of spread it on bread and different things. It's very free form. And I like that because it's kind of like, it's playing with your food, and I like that. But <laughs> did it was, you like the texture of it? I did. It, yeah. it re really complimented bread because it was kind of had a lot of oil, so it kind of seeped into the bread and kind of like flavored the bread, and then it had like a nice sort of nut texture on the top. So right. it was really nice to bite into the piece of bread. So Jacob, you review a lot of restaurants, don't you, for your own website? Mm -hmm. And what's the website? It's called Kid Reviews. I built it with my friend. It's actually really great because it's not just me or him writing yeah. reviews. It's totally crowdsourced. So we have lots of people that go to my school that are writing reviews about different restaurants right. and different books. And it's yeah. How did you get to be such a foodie? I don't know. I feel like my family has always kind of liked food. So mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. But That's a good reason. Yeah. All right. And what else did you have? Yeah. So I had the Georgian salad, which was um, on top. It had a big ball of burrata. And then underneath there was big slices of tomato and cucumber and there were little pomegranate seeds for a little bit of sweetness. And then there was this paste that was kind of the dressing and it was made of walnuts and I think some other spices and it was just like nothing I'd ever tasted before because those, that combination of ingredients. That's a lot of blending of different mm -hmm. cultures lot, right yeah. there in that one dish. I thought it was interesting because um, I kind of looked at a map and I saw that Georgia is you know close to Europe and also close to Asia mm -hmm. and found that it was actually the center of the Silk Route. So it got a lot of cultures so I think that's why it's got like the dumplings like King Kali and then it's got the cheese bread like pizza. And King Kinkali is your favorite. Yes, I love to get kinkali. It's not exactly like uh, this Chinese cousin Shaolong Ball because kinkali is a lot bigger and the dough is more doughy and it has more meat inside. So most cultures have something familiar to kinkalis. 
for example, China or Mongolia or Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan, all of them have the different variations of the meat in the dough. But in Georgia, they say that the real hinkali is supposed to have the, the 18 folds in each hinkali. So if you kind them and the, it's made by the professional, you should find the 18 folds in each hinkali. Is there less or more that it's not real? <laughs> Did you have the hinkali? Yeah, we did have the kinkali. We mm -hmm. had the beef kinkali and we had the mushroom kinkali. And your report? I thought they were incredible. They were so <laughs> good. Phew, Holden, she, she, she loved the kinkali. <laughs> yeah, the soup in the kinkali, like the broth was very good. And the actual stuffing um, was very good. I didn't enjoy the mushroom as much because it was like um, a little bit overpowering, the mushroom flavor. But the beef I enjoyed because it was a lot of different spices in the actual beef itself. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say is the kinkali, the dumplings, I liked them, but the outside felt almost a little bit rubbery. I don't oh, know if like that was really just... Really doughy? Yeah, very yeah. doughy. I don't uh -huh. know if... Maybe that's just my taste, maybe my experience, but I didn't like that the ends weren't... I mean, they, they didn't even feel like they were cooked all the way through. Right. You're not but, supposed to eat the ends. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. see, so here's yeah. the trick. Oh, tell tell okay. everybody the trick. Yeah. yeah, so on the chalkboard to the side, there's mm -hmm. uh, instructions on how to do it. So uh, you stab the top of it. It's not like Chinese dumpling. Chinese right. dumplings you do differently, but you stab the top of it, and then you just kind of eat from the bottom. Oh, yeah. See, they've got. Okay, they, well, they have a lot of descriptions, yeah. and yeah. you learn a lot. They I have know. a whole area with wine from Georgia, which yeah. is one of the oldest uh, winemaking regions in the world. Yeah. So there's a lot of history, a lot of strange, different grape varieties like Ricotelli and all sorts of interesting things. So you can really explore and learn something there. Mm -hmm. And what else did you have? So we got two drinks. Uh, one of them was pear juice, yeah. and it, it tasted like a little bit like almost fermented. Yeah. It, I mean, they're very interesting. One of them it looked like it almost had like an olive in the middle or something. It was like a sweet olive. Uh, and they were very unique. They were not something that I would normally like, oh, I'm going to go have pear juice. But yeah. I, I like them a lot. What else did your group have? Um, can I talk about dessert? You can talk about dessert. So there was this one dessert. It um, started with church, I think, church, church something. Yeah. yeah, that. So it was um, it was really interesting. It's basically like a walnut or some nuts, and then it's dipped in a mixture of flour, sugar, and fermented grape juice. And then they dip it over and over again, so it kind of takes like a candle form. So from afar, it kind of looks like a candle, okay. and it kind of tastes like a date with nuts in the middle. So it was, it was really interesting. Flavors. Did you I never have any had dessert? It Mm -mm, no. no, you're yeah. too full. We were very full. <laughs> too full on all that bread. What about well, desserts? We, we usually don't get desserts, but so we tried the church kala, and we didn't really like it that much. It was kind of, it tastes more like oatmeal than uh, walnuts, really. So it didn't really satisfy my sweet tooth. Right. But along universities, there's lots of other good desserts. Because it is in mm -hmm. a great area, right? You can walk mm -hmm. around yeah. <clears throat> and go uh, I explore. actually went with my five-year-old cousin and she was like, Jacob, I want to go play. And I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> we just basically ran around that whole area. Yeah. And it's honestly, there's like there's like a little toy store near there and different shops. It's, it's a really great area for yeah. sure. All right, Holden, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you want to experience the hidden away country of Georgia, come to Beverly, a feast for the eyes and the stomach. Okay, and Anoki. With a culture made of fusions from European and Asian tastes, Beverly creates new and exciting flavors to the table. And Jacob. Beverly's unique and hearty food leaves you feeling very content and full. And next time I go back, I will eat Kinkali properly. <laughs> if you would like to try Beverly, it's on Bryant Street near University in Palo Alto. It's open every day for lunch and dinner, and the average tab per person is around $40. I have to thank my fantastic guests on this week's show, Jacob, who shared his thoughts on the restaurants featured today, Anoki, who digs into fresh seafood delights at Merseille on Treasure Island, and Holden, who shared the proper way to dive into the ooey-gooey cheesy bread at Beverly in Palo Alto. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Everyone in. And break. Woo! Thank you guys. Grab your grab your Antigua. <laughs> we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants we visited today. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times.
Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Total Wine and More offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. 